This one's gonna go big! Hello and welcome back to the channel. So then, do you remember in the previous Fruit Machine emulation video, this one here about Simbad, where I was saying how magnificent it was to finally play an old machine that you have lots of nostalgic memories for in the emulator and you hear the music again the first time and all those memories come flooding back? Well, yes, that's true. That is magnificent and it's one of the best things about Fruit Machine emulation. However, there is a flip side to that, of course, and that is when something like this happens. When you see a machine for the very first time, a machine that you had no idea even existed. This is a machine, I have never seen it, I've never played it, I didn't know even that Mege ever had this little quirk of the M1AB technology, because this is an M1AB machine that uses a dot matrix display. There we are. If we zoom in right there, you can see that this is a typical M1AB cabinet of the time. This would have been, oh God, what, 93, 94 maybe, something like that. But it's using a dot matrix display. I had no idea that Mege had ever made a machine on this technology which used a dot matrix display. And the layout for this machine was released just a few days ago over at Desert Island Fruits. The DX here is by Tommy C. And what he's saying here is that the ROMs were available. We had a flyer for it, not a particularly good flyer, which he managed to find in one of the various repositories. So putting the ROMs and the flyer together, he thought, well, OK, we've got the basis for a layout here, but we still need the dot matrix display working because the dot matrix display at that time was not supported in the current build of the emulator. So Wizard then did a little bit of tweaking behind the scenes. You can see there, Tommy's saying, I sent it over to Wizard to have a look at, and it needed coding into MFME to make the dot matrix display work. And in no time at all, Wizard had it working. So at that point, we had the ROMs working properly. We had a flyer, and then Tommy put his talents to work to turn this flyer here, which is not the best flyer in the world, let's be absolutely honest about it, let's just zoom right in there, that's all he had to work with. He had that flyer there, and Johnny Frankham here, by all accounts, he is a perfectly nice chap. I didn't, I couldn't have told you before I'd seen this layout and the th release thread over at Desert Island Fruits. If you just said to me, who's John Frankham, I wouldn't have had a bloody clue. I'm not really much good at sports. I know nothing about it, really. But having had a little Google around about him, apparently he's quite a nice chap. He was a very, very good jockey, one of the most successful jockeys ever, or the best jockey never to win the Grand National is his tagline. He then went on to be like a, a, a pundit, a commentator, and he wrote a load of books as well. And by all accounts, he's quite a nice chap. The problem is, however, that his head is in the way of the machine, and specifically that magnificent mop of hair that he's got there is obscuring rather a lot of the machine, and we've got a couple of rosettes in the way and whatnot, so it's not the best source material, but one way or another... Oh, hang on, we're fucking too far, hang on, let's we'll fix that, there we are. One way or another... Tommy has put his substantial DX skills to work and has come up with this layout here. There you go. That is the end result. We've got this DX now to play in the emulator and we've got the first M1AB machine that uses a dot matrix display running in the emulator. And by all accounts, this may be the only one of these as well. Because if you have a look down the release thread here, over at Desert Island Fruits, nobody had a blooming idea that this thing even existed. And Retro Fruit here, who is kind of like the grandfather of M1AB, because of course he was the main driving force behind M1A Madness back in the day. I've covered several of his layouts on the channel previously, specifically the likes of Knoll's House Party and EastEnders and Inferno and Gladiators and all that lot. Some, some of the best mach May Day machines ever, some of the best fruit machines ever, in fact. And you can see there that even Retro Fruit didn't know of this thing, saying here, well, I never. FME continues to surprise even after all these years. I knew of its existence, but not a machine I ever saw in the wild or played. So thanks for getting this running. So he had heard of it, but he'd certainly never seen it up and running. Everyone else didn't have the first clue about it. I certainly never remember seeing one of these at all. This is a completely new one on me. 
So really great. It's, it's completely the opposite of Simbad, which was a machine that straight away, as soon as I saw the layout for Simbad, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to play that again in the emulator. Whereas with this one, I was like, wow, a machine I have never, ever seen before from the era when I was properly, properly into fruit machines. I'm going to have to have a go on that one as soon as possible. Now, you may look like here that we've got two copies of exactly the same layout running, which we kind of have. But let me just reset them both and you will see that is a, there is a difference between. So let me just reset that one there and let me just let me just reset them both and just watch them as they boot up. The one on the right hand side is going to say something quite different to the one on the left hand side. Presented by Whitbread. £10 all cash, 20p play. Value for money. Now let's just go into this because this was a thing in the sort of early to mid 90s. Whitbread were a major pub chain in the UK and they had a bit of a problem with fruit machines. Specifically they had a bit of a problem with uh, pro players going round and doing fruit machines in their pubs. They didn't think it was a good look for their pubs. They didn't want their establishments to become kind of professional gambling dens. It was that era when pubs were kind of transitioning into family-friendly food places, you know, restaurants, people would go there for a meal and all that kind of thing. And what they didn't want is gangs of ne'er-do-wells as they saw it constantly coming in to try and rinse the fruit machines giving their normal customers a poor experience on them and like i say generally in their opinion generally lowering the tone of the establishment somewhat so what they asked several manufacturers at this time to do was come up with specific programs just for their premises and what the manufacturers came up with and what Mega have come up with here is basically a ROM set that doesn't streak. They don't streak and they the jackpots don't repeat very often at all. They are essentially very, very flat profile. So the point of that, of course, was it made them far less appealing for the travelling professional player because you were generally capped at £10 or £20. The jackpot, if it repeated at all, which was pretty rare on these ROMs, it would maybe repeat once. They didn't save up for a big streak like a 40, 50, 60 pound streak or anything like that. And what they did is they hosed that RTP back into more frequent feature entries and far more in the way of three and four pound boards, which the idea was that it was supposed to appeal to a casual player because they would get on the board more often, they'd be able to collect smaller wins more often, and the machine wasn't saving for streaks and saving for jackpot repeaters so the idea being it could generally give a more generous game to the casual punter and wouldn't be targeted by the professional player i'm not entirely sure it works to be honest because this thing here that the whitbread rom version can still play like a little bit of a pig in my experience but it does that without the possibility of you know if, if you get 20 30 quid into it you kind of there's no way you can get back from that because you know the jackpot's not going to repeat a couple of times and there's no chance of getting a streak but you can choose which one you want to play we have the whitbread rom version if you want to have a go at that and we've got the standard mega rom version if you want to have a go at that one now the whitbread rom i've put quite a few quid through and you can see there both the cash pot and the reserve cash pot are very nearly full we've got 10 pound and nine pound this ROM has just become available today, the standard Mayday ROM, so I haven't had a chance to put any cash through that yet, but Mort has suggested that it's got 20 quid in it, not far off a factory reset, so we'll see if we can get that. And that just leaves us to discuss the machine itself, really, and the game. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not the best machine Mega have ever made. I, I've said before, I think Mega started to lose the plot in the £8 era, and by the 10 and 15 pound era they were pretty much a spent force they did all their best work in the four pound 18 six pound era but this is not bad for a 10 pound jackpot mega this isn't too bad it's fairly standard stuff you've just got to fill up the trail here to get into the feature and you've got to add overlaid numbers to get up that trail one thing that it doesn't have is there's no bonus at four on the trail or anything like that and there are no overlaid bonuses on the reels there are only numbers and slightly unusually as well you can't exchange wins into the feature either sure we all remember that it was standard issue on fruit machines at this time 
you got a win on the reels and then if you gambled it once you could either exchange straight away or sometimes there would be an exchange point that you would have to gamble to so you might have to gamble two or three times but whatever the case you know there would always be a way to turn a win into a feature you can't do that on this whenever you get a straight real win you can either just collect it or try and gamble it up if it, if you get to the top if you get to the jackpot it auto collects or you can collect anywhere along the way but you will never be ever offered an exchange into the feature so the base game if you will is a little bit dull it's with, without any bonuses and without any exchanges it's just all about getting numbers to get onto the trail onto a feature which is moderately entertaining this is not the best machine in the world but i had some fun playing it so let's have a look at it let's put some money in and let's just see what's going on i'm going to try and avoid in the main i am going to try and avoid real wins because there's just no point to them so we'll focus on the feature and we'll focus on trying to get the actual features on the feature which you get by these squares here, which, oh, there we are straight on there, which is the Frankham's feature square. The other thing about this machine is the sound and music package isn't the best. This is the era when I think Maygay were kind of writing all their own samples in-house. They weren't nicking them off pop songs and stuff like that. And it's not the best music in the world. <laughs> It's all very uh, horse racing themed. I don't like the look of this. I bet you that will be wrongly accused. It's fairly predictable, this. You always get a ro or a rosette. It might give us a rosette. Well done, that's your first rosette. That's your first rosette. There we are, so that adds to our cash. Sit tight, you've got a big fence coming up. I suspect we'll get a jump clear or a stumble on that. Oh dear, he's oh. fallen. That is a little bit harsh. To kill us on three quid is a little bit harsh. That's not the best feature in the world, that one. So we'll have to get back up again. As you can see here, there's not a huge amount to do. There's no bonus to go for. There's no bonuses on the reels. There's no bonus at number four. It is just about straight filling up the entry trail here, which doesn't make for the most involving base game. Oh, the, the cash pot has just filled up. The reserve cash pot is now full as well as the main cash pot. I am not going to go. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just show it to you. Two pounds. It's not great music, is it? It's not the best. That's good. We might even lose that. So there we have. We want to gamble, but you'll see there, no feature exchange. We can gamble again. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. That's all you can do. You can either collect what win you've got, try and gamble all the way up to the jackpot, but at no point will you be offered a feature exchange. Let's just try and get back into the feature again. What we want to be landing on is the Frankham's feature square. There. So we're back in again. Well done, that's your first rosette. Got our first rosette again. There's our three quid. What it generally does is it's usually happy. Let's just see what it does here. He stumbled. Oh dear, he's fallen. Well, that was another quite poor feature, wasn't it? We're not too pleased with that. It will usually let you get to like four quid, th three or four quid, and then maybe take a, a force a collect prize on you using the find off like the, the uh, mystery. That's going to be a rosette or wrongly accused. Great That'll add a quid. And these race on squares, that they're literally nothing. When you land on these race on squares, it is just nothing. Now, once you get four quid here, it does like to do a steward's inquiry. Or just kill you outright. What it does like to do is land on the steward's inquiry and give you a fine. Okay, you can nudge now. Take a quid off you, and then that's just a collect prize. So we can see here there's not really much point to this. Let's just see if it'll let us gamble again, which it has. But you'll never be offered an exchange. At no point will you be offered an exchange. Which does make the, the real wins feel slightly pointless. So it is all just about getting on the field. Well, we could go for a cheeky nudge there. Cheeky hold after nudges. That would give you the... So there, we can see there you've got to hold them all to get the... Oh, you know what? That is actually the first time I've had the barcode. I played this quite a bit yesterday. I, I never got the barcode once. Is that it? Oh, it's not the best. Well, that's something else to look out for. There we go. I've just learned something as I'm playing it, that it's actually got a barcode. 
genuinely didn't know that, but that I went for the single bar there, didn't I? I managed to get a massive three quid off it. So we'll collect that out, we'll just keep going, and we'll try and get onto the uh, feature and land on Frankham's feature, because you have six different features. Go straight in. It does compensate, by the way, because it hasn't got the bonus at four and there's no overlay bonuses, it does compensate for that by making it relatively easy to fill up the trail. Well, and that's your first rosette. There's our first rosette. Now we're into Stuart's Inquiry territory. Oh, we've got Frankham's feature. Let's collect that. Now then, what's in Frankham's feature? Now, we can get straight into Winner's Enclosure here, so that would be nice. It's the winning post. Nine. Yes, that's a winner. Oh. And you know what? I've not. Ha I've had four of them before. I haven't had winning posts before, so I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. Do you have to learn the values of the horses, One maybe? Time. I don't know. We'll just test this again, just see if it, maybe at some point it will offer us an exchange. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure you never get offered an exchange. Nope. You can see there, all I can do is just keep gambling or collect. So really all that we want to do here is get onto the feature and see if we can get Frankham's feature or the winner's enclosure. Or we could get hold after nudges for those maybe. No, so we'll collect that two quid out. Oh, the cash pot by the way, the only way that I can see of getting the cash pot is just straight on the reels here. I can't see any way of getting the cash pot when you're actually on the feature. There doesn't seem to be any way of doing it. it does seem to me so we could almost have a cheeky hold for the barcode there, but we won't. We'll get onto the feature. So pointless square. Sit tight, you've got a big fence coming I'd up. I'd be very surprised if that kills us. You're over that one. Never touched a twig. Never touched a twig. I don't like the look of this. That'll be a rosette or wrongly well accused. Then, there we are. Rosette. It could do with a few more samples as well, if they do get a little a bit tired. You're over that one, never touched a twig. Yeah, never touched a twig. You'll get used to never touching a twig. Pointless square, pointless square. I don't like the look of this. It, that, sh that won't kill us, surely. Yeah, wrongly great accused, stack. that'll be a quid. Not looking like a great board, this, is it? Sit tight, you've got Ooh. a big fence coming up. Great jump. Oh, well that'll give us a bonus. You're going well, that's two rosettes. When you get a well clear, you'll get a spin round the board and it'll give you something good. Hmm, I'm not fancying this, what about... Uh, well oh done. no, we've survived! It's not a bad little feature, in fairness. It's not like too bad. Oh, that might have us, you know. Bad luck, you've been fined. <laughs> and there we are, after all that, we've ended up a, with a collect prize of one pound, I'm afraid. That's straight in. And then we will have a look at the other ROMs over there, just see if we can get that 20 quid that Mortar suggested it's usually happy to do not it's long like after a factory a reset. Was that Great jump. That'll well give us something clear. good. Oh, Frankham's feature. We'll collect Frankham's feature. Now then, what's in Frankham's feature? What is in that? What indeed? It's the National. Oh, this is, yeah, you just pick a horse and then <laughs> watch, watch the graphics on these horses. They look like ants, honestly. And they're off. Awesome portrayal of all. Are we going to win? Oh no, we're going to come last. <laughs> Just got run out of it in the closing stages. Oh. Ah, now yeah, what happens there? The Chelt... Ah, the values are higher. I haven't had that one before. What I've had is the Cheltenham Cup before, and the values are lower on the Cheltenham Cup, because on the Cheltenham Cup, I think you get three quid for coming second or even first or the national is basically the same thing but the values are boosted because we got three quid there for coming third which suggests to me that maybe if you can come first at the national you will get a jackpot maybe i don't like the look of this great stuff it never kills you on the first steward's inquiry Ooh, that won't have us will it you get nothing for getting round the board there's our second rosette Oh dear. Great jump. Oh, that'll get, well we'll get our third rosette. Oh, Frankham's feature. Well, let's have it again. What's in Frankham's feature? It's the stable oh, now door. this can give you a jackpot if it wants to. Depends how fast it's going. It's like um, night time on screenplay. Oh, that to me looks like it might start going a bit too fast. It is, yeah. This is one of the faster ones. 
Now it's going to go too fast. Oh, it was middle. I wondered if it was middle. That can give you a jackpot. I've had that one go so slow, it's just like a gimme for a jackpot. That was one of the faster ones there, where it seems to dick you at four quid. I mean, if it plays like other Maygays of the £10 era, it will have a block at five quid, which would tie in with it fucking you off there when it gets to four quid. Not entirely sure how, what the innards of this are in terms of where the blocks are, but Maygays generally at this time had a five pound block, didn't they? That might have us. Yeah, that's going to be a one pound fine. Is it a two pound fine? That's a bit harsh. So you can see here with these whip bread ROMs, they do at least put you on the board quite regularly. But what you will find, and I found playing, I put a fair few bob through this last night. And it is flat. It is pretty flat, to be honest with you. The best I managed to do, winner's enclosure. I got winner's enclosure, I think, three times. It was just a flat tenner every single time. The best that I managed to do was stable door gave me a jackpot. A nice, easy jackpot on two consecutive boards. But other than that, the whole thing was really rather flat. I can see what they were going for with these ROMs, but in emulation terms, it's not necessarily the way that you would want to play it. So it's a good thing, really, that we do have the choice here of playing the, the sort of proper main Maygay ROMs, if you will. We'll just finish this board off. And then we'll see if we can get that easy 20 quid out of the other one. Let's just see what this one wants to do. Well done, that's your first rosette. Okay, now we're into the danger zone. Oh dear, he's fallen. Yeah, indeed, that's a fall. Right, so let's move on to the other one and see if it does indeed have a nice easy um, 20 quid in it. So what I'll do is bring us back when we're on the board. Okay, well that's onto the board. Let's just see what it does. Obviously, this is basically from a factory reset, but what we're going off here is the idea that it might have a quick then, 20 quid in it from a factory speaker? reset. Let's just see what Frankham's feature gives us. It's the stable door. Mm, is it going to be a fast one or a slow roll? No, that's speeding up. That looks to me like it's speeding up. Yeah, it's definitely... This is not what the jackpot one looked... Oh, dear. And now it's going to dick us? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that looks to me like a £5 block board. Okay, we'll try on the next board. Well, we're up to four quid. Let's see what it wants to do now. Oh, five quid. Well, this is playing quite differently to the other ones. It doesn't do... Oh, like no, Stu's Inquiry on seven quid. You're going well. That's two rosettes. Oh, half if we can get another rosette. Eight quid there. Oh, do we want to take Frankham's feature or... Pu Let's push for the rosette. Oh, not nearly a jackpot. Nearly a jackpot. Come on. Race on. I want the rosette, really. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Don't kill me. Don't. We just about survived. Right, okay. Let's carry on. Oh, no, 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 no. Wrong. Oh, that's going to put us up to a jackpot. So, it's like... It's... <laughs> it's freaking out a little bit there, isn't it? We can collect £9. <laughs> flashing between £9.90 and a tenner. It is letting us race on. Let's just see if we can get the rosette. Like oh, the dear. Oh no! <laughs> Eight pound fine, you dirty bastard. Right, okay, next board. Okay, we, you know what? It does play a different game. It plays a much harsher game getting you into the feature. And it seems to be more prepared to add well, relatively large amounts of cash. The other one. The whip bread ROMs are, they'll let you get to three quid, four quid, and then they'll either kill you or give you a fine, whereas this one seems to be... Oh, it's offering Frankham's feature happier to let you go to try and push it a little bit more, but it makes it the features cost more as a result. Even from this relatively small play sample, I can definitely feel the difference in how these uh, Maygay ROMs play compared to these sort of like Maygay whip bread ROMs, if you will. Oh, treble up. Welcome to the winner's enclosure. So there we are. We are in the winner's enclosure. Let's see what we get. 
not the best music again. Let's press the big stop button. It should be S for stop. Tom is usually very good for his shortcuts. So there's a five. Who would certainly want another five, wouldn't we? Oh, it's a spin. Dirty bugger. I'll see it out for one more board. Okay, we're up to a fiver again. Let's see what it does. Big oh, a fence. A oh dear, he's fallen. Oops. Well, that's a hold after nudges for eight quid. And we can't lose that gamble. Well, let's gamble for the jackpot. At least we'll get the jackpot, Ditty. You've won the jackpot! Well, at least we've seen the jackpot. And then we've seen the uh, jackpot ditty as well. I would recommend, even from this short sample, this plays to me a far better game, a far more interesting game. I hadn't realised just how flat... Oh, is that a barcode? It should be a barcode, I think. I hadn't realised just how flat the uh, Whitbread ROMs are. Let's go for the triple bar this time, shall we? Oh, trail skill. Well, we know how good I am at skill. Come on, Degsy. Oh, it just puts you into the feature. <laughs> it's literally just a feature entry. I thought it was going to be like some kind of catch trail. Climb. Let's see what this feature pays, then. And I think we'll be coming up to half an hour, so I'll, I'll wrap this one up. Let's just see what we get off this. Uh, of the two ROM sets, you definitely want to be playing these these kind of proper ROMs, if you will. Let's finish off with a Franken's feature. It's the winning post. Now, we have this, so I don't know what these numbers equate to. Yes, that's a winner. So four is a quid. I, maybe you've just got to learn what the different horses are worth. I don't know. I couldn't tell you for sure on that one. So there we are. Let's just collect that out. This is a machine that you almost certainly haven't played before. I certainly had no idea it even existed. And it's doubly a new one on me because we've got the dot matrix display too, which I had no idea Mege had ever used. So... It's not a bad little game. Certainly now that we've got, you know, inverted commas, the proper ROMs, I would knock the Whitbread ROMs on the head, to be honest. They, they just don't give as good a game as the full-fat Mege ROMs. As ever, it's thank you to everyone who made this happen. Tommy C for the DX, Wizard for the emulator, and also making the extra tweaks to get it working with the dot matrix display. And Mort as well, who dug out the extra ROM set, which meant that we were able to get off those Whitbread ROMs there. So a great historical curiosity, something new for Fruit Machine emulation, even though the machine itself, of course, is the best part of 25 years old. I've had a fair amount of fun playing this, and I think I'll definitely be playing it some more now that we've got the proper ROMs. So, as ever, thank you to everyone who made this one happen. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you next time. But for now it is, from me and John Frankham's magnificent head of hair, goodbye. You've won the jackpot!